Hello and welcome to another episode on dynamic programming. I'm remaking this episode which was done previously and I'm trying to add more details and uh, make it better than the previous video based on the feedback I got from you guys. So I appreciate all the feedback and it's always welcome. Uh, so thank you for that. Now the problem today is exact coin change. So what happens? In this problem, we are given a set of coins x1 through xn and unlimited supply. We can use any number of coins at any stage. The value, some value is given, which is v, and we are asked if we can make exact coin change for this value v. So how do we use dynamic programming to solve this problem? So, um, whoops. Um, so the way we will solve this problem using dynamic programming is we make this familiar matrix notation and the way this matrix is set up is that we're going to put the coins on this y-axis. So in this example, I've taken like one cent, five cent, 10 cent, 25 cent. All these coins are on the, the left side, which is the y-axis. On the x-axis, we have values v1, 2, and so on till some value m, I actually should have put it as v. So let's just say, you know, some large value, um, which is capital V or capital M. Now, the way we will solve this is that, first of all, there's the initial condition. Initial condition is that if p of zero, which is if the value is zero, which means if I was to make zero with a set of coins, I can always make it, right? That's the assumption. And it's a reasonable assumption. So if we make p zero equals one, and then the way I would set it up is that I have two conditions. One, as I run through for any given value, if I run through all these coins, which is filling the columns here, then I have to assume that there's some coin that fits within this budget, which is xi is less than equals to v, which is some v that I'm looking at right now. And then once I have taken this coin out, the residual value, which is p probability for that is v minus xi, which means that what is the probability I can make the remainder using these sets of coins? And if that probability is also one, then this problem can be solved using dynamic programming because I've used a previous problem to solve this next problem, right? And so if both are true, then probability of V becomes one and which is what we do here. So just running through this example real quick, let's just see when V equals one, uh, when I take one cent coin here, I know that one cent is less than or equals to value of one cent. And then if I do P of one minus one, P of one minus one is P of zero and P of zero we assume to be one. So both those conditions are met and therefore we put one here. Now all the remaining are zero because the value of the coin is larger than the value that we are trying to achieve. So these are all zeros. So now if any of these in this column becomes a one, then you put P of you know, V equals one. So P of one equals one because I can make using any coin here I was able to make this value, therefore it becomes a one. I don't care how, but if any of these was one, this becomes one. Now let's try to solve P um, probability for two, right? We are trying to solve for this. Now here what happens is that it's very similar. So I run through all the coins. For a very first coin, when I take one, I see that one is less than two, yes. And then the remainder, the residual value is P two minus one, which is P of one, P of one was one. Therefore, both of these are again true and therefore I can make. The way I make it is I just take two copies of coin one and that's how you make two, right? And that's why this was possible. And at this point, you don't really care about these because if one of them is true, you could really break out of this loop and just say we're done, P of two is one. But you could run through all of them just for completeness sake. And so you uh, see the pattern here. Now we keep doing this over and over um, and we'll reach this final value of V and or M. And then when you have filled all this column, you see if any of these is one, then it becomes P of M or P of V equals one. Otherwise P of M or V equals zero. So that's really it. That's the algorithm, right? And so um, the pseudocode is then available here. The way the pseudocode works is that you start with a value, which is on this X axis. And the value goes from one to V. And in the beginning, you set P of V equals zero. And um, one thing I should have done is P of zero equals one. I should have put this up here so that the boundary condition is set up, which was right here. I'm missing that here, but you, you know that that should be set up here. So if P of zero is one, you can run the loop on V equals one to M. 
and when you go uh, initial value is zero for that probability and then you run through all the coins so k equals one to n is basically running through this y-axis all the coins and if any given coin value fits within this v and the remainder residual value of pv minus xk that probability is true then this probability also becomes true and therefore if any of these coin fits then p of v becomes one so that is the loop and then at the end of it you just return p of v which is the value here at the last column right and that's that's your answer so what is the order of the solution the order is basically is just a square matrix and we are doing one computation at each node each um, each uh, square so it really is v times n and v times n is your order so that's it for this episode guys um, once again i appreciate all the feedback i have gotten in this series and it's helped me uh, improve the quality of the video in some cases uh, you know the pseudo code is missing and it's harder to understand or it's very textual people can't uh, follow along I really appreciate the feedback that you've given me, and this is definitely going to help me improve the quality of these videos. So thanks for uh, staying on my channel, and uh, I'll see you in another video in some other series. Um, thanks, and bye-bye.